Think just because I'm a marriage counselor, I don't ever make mistakes in my marriage? Well, you'd be wrong. My name is Chris Bailey, Christian Counselor and Marriage Coach with Expedition Marriage, where we help you enjoy the journey of marriage. And let me tell you about one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my marriage. I'm a people pleaser. And that's not the mistake. It's okay to be a people pleaser. But I allow that people pleasing to make me an extremely passive husband. And that was a mistake in the marriage. Sure, it seemed like it worked out at the beginning, you know, where my wife kind of needed, you know, someone to, to be a, a knight in shining armor. I was happy to be there. I was happy to say yes. I was happy to, to be liked and to be loved and put on a pedestal because of that and, and how great of a person I was. But I wasn't being authentic. And I wasn't allowing myself to have the voice that I should and, and wanted to have and that my wife wanted me to have. And I know I'm not alone in that because there's a lot of husbands, you know, us out there who have struggled and still do struggle with this idea of either being a doormat or a big jerk, All right? We don't know how to really find a, a happy medium. And well, one of the ways that I found with that is truly understanding the difference between kind and being nice. Because I haven't made an exhaustive search. I, I've, I've looked a little, but I am pretty confident the term nice is not something that we're commanded to be in the Bible, right? That's not something that we're, that's called of us to be nice. But we are called to be kind. And let me l let you know what the difference is. Nice does the thing to be loved, right? Sure, I'll, you could do that. Yeah, we could buy that even though we don't have the money in the budget. But I want you to, to be able to have what you want, honey, so you can be happy and you'll like me because I'm saying yes. And that's not a great long-term strategy. Kindness, on the other hand, which we are called to be, does the loving thing regardless of how we get treated or what we get in response, right? I do, I'm nice because I want to be loved as a response. I want you to like me. I want you to like what I'm saying. So that's why I'm being nice. It's not necessarily kind. Kind does the loving thing, which doesn't get the response always that you, a people pleaser, would want. Um, so, you know, an example, you know, with that shopping, you know, hey, you know, I would love to get that for you, but right now, the budget's, it's not in the budget right now, and, and I'm gonna have to say no for now, and then we can budget that and then get that. And sure, you might not be happy, and sure, you might, you know, not uh, be appreciative of hearing me tell you no, but it's the best thing to do. It's the loving thing to do. You know, the kids ask you to play in a busy street with semi-trucks and, you know, it, it, no, no, because that's kind. Now, they might not understand why it's, you know, oh, you're so unfair and all that, right? So I'm not getting the thing. Nice would say, oh, well, yeah, let me say yes. Or, or let's, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, we could. No, but kind is the thing that which we're called to be needs to look out for the best interests of the people whom we love, regardless of whether it makes us everybody's favorite. Because you know, when I started to become kind versus nice, and I started trying to do the loving thing instead of being loved, and I wasn't worried about so much being the doormat, and I wasn't being a big jerk because, you know, well, you know this kind of stuff. You know, I was able just to start to say the yes, let my yes be yes, and my no be no for the right reasons because I wanted the best for my wife and my family, right? I wanted her to us to not to have problems meeting our bills just because we wanted to get a quick fix from buying something at the store, right? You know, so I was I had the, the best long-term interest for everybody and she had seen that and respected that. And as I was being kind and I was doing the right thing with the right heart, then she could see that and, re and continue to gain that respect, continue to gain trust, because as I was saying, oh yeah, let's buy that, even though we can't afford it, even though it's not in the budget, well, that stuff would come up later. That stuff comes out. 
It's like, oh, okay, well, why can't we pay this credit card bill? Well, I, I, we made some decisions. Why did you let me do that? Why did you let me run over you like that? You know, why? It makes me feel like you're scared of me. It makes me feel like we're not a partnership. It makes me feel like you can't trust telling me things that, you know, that especially the hard truth. And if you can't tell me the hard truth, well, what else aren't you telling me? So the, the thread gets quickly unraveled, right? Just, just little pulls and starts to all come apart. So I've learned to be kind. I've learned not to be as passive. Sure, I like a, 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 to make people happy. I like to, you know, for, to be loved, but I know it's more important. And I know that God calls me to be kind and to not be that passive husband, but to be the loving husband who's going to do the loving thing and look out for his wife, even when it doesn't get him the, the fanfare that he's looking for. If you want to hear the whole story, check out this podcast, Confessions of a Passive Husband. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment so we can keep bringing you content like this.